Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 17 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss editing a model in MVC. Please watch part 16 before proceeding with this video. This is what we want to achieve. At the moment, we have this index view, which lists all the employees that are present in this database table. Now notice that every employee has got an edit link next to them. Once I click on this edit link, we want to present the user with this edit form where we can change the employee details as required. And then once we click on the save button, we want to save the changes to the database table. Let's flip to the browser. So this is the index view. Now let me click on this edit link and see what's going to happen. We get an error, the resource cannot be found. Notice the URL, we are navigating to edit action with an employee controller okay and look at employee controller class do we have edit action method within that no we don't and that's the reason why we get this error the resource cannot be found so obviously the first thing to do is to implement this edit action method within employee controller class so this is how it's going to look and the first thing to notice here look at the name it's edit and then notice that this method is decorated with HTTP get attribute meaning this controller action method is only going to respond to the get request of this URL notice this URL the action name is edit and this controller action method will only ever respond to the get request of this URL because it's decorated with HTTP get attribute and another important thing to notice is the parameter look at this it is receiving a parameter you know ID parameter look at the URL once we click on this edit link we are also passing the ID of the employee okay so that gets passed into this controller action method and within the action method itself what we are doing we are creating an instance of employee business layer class and this object has got employees property which is going to list all the employees but then we want only that single employee whose ID should match with what's coming into this edit method okay so we are using that little lambda expression there to get that single employee and then once we have the employee that we want to edit we hand it over to the view the view will render this form so let's go ahead and implement this controller action method let's flip to Visual Studio so let's make a copy of this action method just to speed things up so let's get rid of this action name attribute and let's name our controller action method edit and then we need to have a parameter ID so this is going to be the ID of the employee that we are going to edit so now let's go ahead and create an instance of our employee business layer class so employee business layer and then this object has got a property employees which is going to list all the employees but we are only interested in that single employee where that employees ID is equal to whatever is coming into this method as a parameter and let's assign it to employee object and then let's hand this employee object to the view okay so we are done implementing the controller action method now we need the view and to generate the view right click on the controller action method select add view from the context menu look at that the name of the view is headed uh, view engine is going to be razor we want to create a strongly typed view and our model class is going to be employee class that's present in our business layer project and scaffold template is going to be edit okay let's click add and this should add edit.cshtml view within employees folder low so I have here edit.cshtml now the first thing that I want to do is I want to get rid of the scripts section here we are going to talk about scripts in a later video session and then let me add another div tag here to specify a style of font family so div style is equal to font hyphen family and let's set it to area and let's take that closing div tag and move that to the end of the form okay so that's all there to it let's go ahead and run this now let's navigate to the index action 
so that should list all the employees let's click on edit look at that I get you know the employee that I'm trying to edit here uh, mark his gender is male city London and and uh, date of birth now one thing to notice here gender at the moment it's using text box but it makes more sense to have a drop down list for gender instead of text box as an editing interface and if you remember we have implemented you know if we go back to the list and then if we click on this create new look at this we have this form to create a new employee and we implemented this in part 12 of this video series okay and notice that for gender we have a drop down list here so we can make use of the same code from that create view okay so let's go back to visual studio we have this create view there so here we have this piece of code you know which renders the drop down list for us okay and notice that you know we are using this drop down list uh, HTML helper so let me copy that and then move that over to our edit view so here we have this gender so I'm going to replace this code with this one and let's format this properly to do that select the HTML and press control KD alright so what we are doing here look at this this is the name of the property gender and then a drop down list is a collection of you know select list item objects so we are creating a new list of select item select list item and these are our two objects you know male and female and then we want this as the first option within the drop down list okay so with that let's go ahead and run this and see if it's going to work as expected so employee index let's edit so Mary and notice that the gender drop down list has correctly selected Mary's gender which is female okay it's not defaulting to select gender okay now let's change Mary's details from New York to let's say New York 1 and let's submit this and see what's gonna happen again we have an error the resource cannot be found and it makes sense because you know this is the URL but we are posting the form okay and if you look at the controller action method that we have with an employee we have an edit controller action method but then since we have decorated that with HTTP get attribute it's going to respond only to the get request of this URL but not the post request in our next video we'll discuss how to solve this error on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.